Welcome back to another episode of The Linguistic Show. Hey, hey, y'all. So you know that's Jason. Mm-hmm. And I'm Carol. That's right. So today we're talking about keeping people out of your business, mm. whether it's family, friends sometimes, I guess coworkers too. All them people try to be in everybody's business, man. They all in your Kool-Aid. Don't even know the flavor. That's how old folks used to say it back in the 90s. Y'all in my Kool-Aid, you don't even know the flavor. People, people think still say that. People still say that. Yeah, people, Man, people who are our age range are older. Lit. I'm lit. I'm still current. That's what matters. <laughs> okay, so if if you happen to catch our um, our welcome back um, kind of episode um, a few weeks ago, we talked about some of the things that that we're going to be covering in this new season of the show, and one of them was keeping people out of business. Mm-hmm. And so I do admit. That for many years, I don't have a quantity, so I'll just say many. <laughs> for many. I, 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 that I, means it's more than one. Yes. That means it's less than 100, and it's more, it might be several. It means it's less than 18, because we've been <laughs> less than 18. 18. <laughs> yes. It's so, several, I guess. Yes, several. several. And so that was something that I would do, not to be malicious or to be hurtful, but it was more of a way of getting advice or suggestions and so i would on various occasions several occasions ask my family members or friends for their opinions on certain things that were going on in my marriage with jason and so this can be whether you're married or dating or have a life partner this is not all about marriage because these things apply in any kind of intimate relationship correct Okay. Or even in other kind of relationships, just in friendships or even like, you know, the truth of the matter is you might have some going on at work where you have a, a tenuous uh, or strenuous rather uh, relationship. I think both are good words for that. But anyway, strenuous relationship. I don't know where the bell is. It's downstairs. It's downstairs. <laughs> Damn. A strenuous relationship with, with like one of your coworkers or something and your, your, your friend or relative might want to put their two cents or another coworker might want to put their two cents and you don't realize that they're not even looking out for your best interest. They just want to see the world burn. There's a lot of people right out about here. That. The There's haters. a lot of people that just want to see the world burn. They don't want to see you happy. They just want to see things get messed up so they have something else to talk about. And so, like, that's, I mean, it could be in your intimate relationship. It could be in a work relationship. It could be a friendship. I know my daughters have even talked about silly stuff like that where they've asked their friends for advice and their friends give them the absolute wrong advice. Yeah. And, and like, and like with them, these girls who are preteens and teens may be giving what they think is is, is good mm-hmm. advice because of their age range, but, but but as adults, we clearly see that that's not good advice. Right, and so that's why it's important to you know keep everybody at arm's length. You know, it's one thing when you solicit help; it's mm-hmm. another thing when people volunteer their help. And I think that that's really where I have an issue is when people volunteer to be in your relationship and give you their two cents when I don't need change. I don't even carry cash on me. I'm all debit credit out here. I don't need your two (laughs) cents, Slim. Okay, so then... Jason loves metaphors. Yes, he does. He's the metaphor king and I'm the... I'm the metaphor man! Yes. The metaphor man! He's the metaphor man. And so, like, what you just said about, like, not asking for their advice or their opinions... Wouldn't they have to know something about what's going on before they even would even? Oh, you they, see, and there, and then there, therein, therein lies the rub, as they said in Shakespeare. Therein lies oh. the rub. So oh. yes, <laughs> um, so yes, I'm on references today. It's Monday, man. So um, yes, that is one of those things. It's like yes, you can solicit help. But how are they going to help you if they don't know what's going on or right. even a little bit of what's going on? And now you've done invited someone into your business. Yeah, so it's a double-edged sword. And so we're trying to figure out, I guess, you and I, if it really has benefits of asking people you know, their advice or whether they should always stay out of your 
Okay, so I think that there are benefits to asking people for advice in any walk of life. And I think in relationships in particular, because we all know some people who've had happy relationships and been married forever. We all know that one couple, they might have their issues on the inside, but on the outside, they look great. And so you want to know, how do I get there? You don't know what's going on behind the scenes. And so, sure, ask for advice on this or ask for advice on specific things. I think what where things tend to get uh, side sideways is when you ask the wrong people okay and the wrong people could be those people who don't have your best interest in mind but they they may come across like they do number one people who don't have your best interest in mind or at heart yes number one (laughs) number two people who don't even know the right answer they're not a good resource yes that's that's the actual i think in my personal experience with my friends and They ask me a lot for relationship advice. You know why? Because I have a long-term relationship that's relatively successful. Now, there are people out here that ain't it. (laughs) They ain't shit. But we keep asking them for advice. Like, they the ones that know what to do. Like, Slim. Like, I'm not going to name no names, but you have one friend who is (laughs) terrible. No, I'm not even going to tell you in your ear. I'm not going to let it get on the recording. There's one person... One of your friends who's terrible in relationships, but always has an opinion as to what's going on. And it's like, dog, like, get get your house in order. Like how they say in the Bible, here go another reference, because we love (laughs) it. You know, don't be the one who, that's not how, I almost went George Bush on you and messed the quote up. And it's like, fool me twice, shame. No, fool me. Fool 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 me again. Fool me once, shame on you. No, I know what the statement is. I'm trying to say it like W said it. Because I almost messed up the the don't throw stones in a glass house quote just now. I'll try to get it out and I didn't even try to put it out because I knew I was going to say it wrong but that person does live in a glass house and throws all the stones <laughs> and so what I'm getting at is just don't be don't I mean I, take people's advice for what it is like so just because somebody's had a rough patch of relationships over the years doesn't mean they don't have little nuggets right. of insight that may help you however You got to take that with a grain of salt. That's like me uh, asking somebody for advice on my car, but his car is clearly leaking oil and sounds like crap. And, you know, it's always in the shop. But I'm asking you for advice on how my my car runs like that don't make sense because he has a car. I feel like, oh, I guess I can ask him for advice on the car. And it's like, no, so just because you have a Camaro also doesn't mean you know how to take care of your Camaro. And just because people have relationships also doesn't mean that they know how to take care of their relationship or be in a relationship or even live that relationship properly. Some people just, again, want to have a person. And so they're not good at like a serial. Yeah, they're they're a serial dater. I have a friend. I have a friend who's a serial dater. He is definitely a serial dater. And I and I really want the best for him. I want him to have a family and do all the right things. But it's like, bro, like you got to just pick one and stop. Stop being a serial dater. Like, you got to just find one. And we all know who the one is, but he won't let us all know in public who the one is, even though we all know who the one is. But he's so, embarrassed. No, he's not embarrassed. I think to it's admit something. It? I think it's something else. Okay, I think it I think it's a, a scenario where he don't want to turn in his player card. He don't want to he don't want to admit that the game is over, but bro, you're in your 30s. Like, the game is over, fam. Like, come on, grow up. You got kids. Grow up, fam. Anyway. Yeah, it's, it's so those are all good points. And so I guess to to bring it back to the two of us. Rewind. I should add an effect. For that. Rewind. I don't got to add an effect. You, just, uh, <laughs> you don't got to add nothing. I got the sound effects. effects. <laughs> Rewind. One of the biggest mistakes that I made when we were first married, and I'm not sure how many years it lasted, because I had made a huge effort to really stop doing this because it was causing tension with you and I. It was to solicit. Mm, I love that word, solicit. And I can spell it too. But I won't oh, can it. you? Can you? Yes. Can you? S-O-L-I-C-I-T. Hey! <laughs> so one of the things that I would do was was ask for advice or or opinions or suggestions from people who were close to me in my, in my family. So my family unit is humongous we have lots of cousins aunts uncles who live in the dc metro area Mm -hmm. and so i would i would ask a certain few of them like for their advice and 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 i would say that for the most part for my for, for my family at least they would give me good advice because they had already been married 
and I will, and, and I will only ask people in my family who I know have been through what I'm going through because they're married. And so what surprised me, and I don't know what year it was, it had to be actually within our first, maybe three or four, because we were living in our townhouse. And so that was before Ashley was born. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it had to be between 04 and 2010. Is that right? Did we live there six years? Okay, yeah. So anyhow, yeah, it's right. Yeah, on the math. <sighs> oh, no. Oh, five. Okay. No, it was, it was, anyhow, it was between 05 and 2010 that yeah, I. Yeah, because we had, we lived in an apartment in Tacoma Park for a year. Yeah, you forgot about that part. Yeah. So one thing that, that I did learn during that, on that five year period of living in the townhouse, because I, I, remember, I remember very, very clearly I was calling my mom to, um, to ask her a question about us, marriage, relationships, how I handle certain things. And so she told me that. She loves us both, so don't ask her because she wants to be neutral. She doesn't want to know. Aww. No, it's true. I mean, Aww. oh, we love you, Debbie. But <laughs> but she told me you know, that since she loves us both, like you as an as actual son and me as her daughter, she didn't want to hear anything or, or know anything that may actually change how she thinks about you. And so... She was, she was, she was telling me about, it. basically that even though I may get over certain things or we can move on like from certain issues, she may not be able to get past those things. So like she would never want to hear or know anything that would taint that would taint her thoughts of you. And so that was actually the first time that that someone had told me that in terms of like don't tell me. I don't want to know. Basically, she was telling me to keep me out of our business. Right, which is the right thing to do. Yes. Um, she was um, telling you to do the right thing. Yeah, and so that was actually the only person who told me that. Of course, because everybody else wants the tea. They're like that's the difference but, but, between someone I who's mature. That. That's one some the difference between someone who's mature and understanding and actually caring and wants to help you versus someone else who just wants the tea. They just want to laugh. Right. They just want to to know something so that they can know something so that they can have something else right. to talk about in their miserable lives. And you're right because I I hadn't thought of it. I hadn't, I hadn't thought about it in that way of term, in terms of just like people wanting just to know what's going on because of the whole um, saying of of a misery loves company. Right, they love so it. Yeah. I was miserable, but I was going through through, through things that were clearly bothering me and I wanted some advice. So that is an example of actually someone saying, yes, keep me out. I don't want to hear about it. But the other times with over friends, I can look back now and see that some of them did not have my best interest in mind because now that I look back on things years later, I'm like, that was bad advice. So, so, so I'm glad that I didn't totally follow their advice because if I did, I don't know whether I'll, I'll still be married or, or if you were, it would be really unhappy. I mean, it's kind of like what I had said earlier about taking people's uh, word a with a grain of salt. salt. Like I'm I'm just one of those kind of people anyway, just because of things that have happened in my life uh, growing up, especially in my late teens and early 20s, to where I just kind of have a hard time trusting and believing anything anybody says anyway until they mm -hmm. prove or show that I so that I know that I can believe them. That's just who I am as a person. I mean, that's unfortunate for me, but it is the truth. And right. so um, in that particular case, I can't say I mean, I can definitely say that there were people who gave me tons of bad advice, but I took it with a grain of salt because I looked at who they were to begin with. And so I didn't. You know, yeah. I listen to the advice. OK, it's good to, to hear something, but I'm not paying attention. I'm not. Well, let me take that back. I'm not saying I'm not paying attention. Right. I'm not putting anything that you're talking about into action, my dude, because you're trying to see the world burn. You're one of those people like I, I have one of those friends who definitely is one of those. I want to see the world burn people. He does not want to see people happy. <laughs> he wants to see everything crazy happen so we can laugh about it. And so, like, that's. There's just people like that in this world. And there are also people who are jealous of what you have. And so um, I, I had a friend who 
I thought was a friend. And um, turns out they were just really, really jealous of what we had and the fact that even though I kind of came from uh, interesting circumstances and, yeah, you know, you everything, up, yeah. everything has kind of come, you know, come back around to be a little bit more positive for me, especially over the last 10, 15 years of my life. And I have a bunch of people who've known me for a long time that they're not down with that. They upset that I got it together and I was able to get it together by getting with the girl who treated me right instead of running the streets and acting a fool with you guys. Like I had friends who were on some, well, you don't, we don't call you because you always be in the house with your girl. I'm like, yeah, that's what I'm supposed to do, fool. Like, what are you talking about? Now, that has a lot to do also with us getting married um, at an early age. Yeah, And, true. you know, my friends weren't necessarily ready for that kind of lifestyle yet but by the same token yeah there are people who tried to give me bad advice and so i just kind of looked at it like okay well i know who you are now so i won't ask you for advice on anything else because i know that you're not a trustworthy source for that okay so then you were asking them for advice rather than rather than them just giving you well no opinions. nobody's nobody goes out of that's a male female well, thing I like men don't worse. go i'm not gonna go to my <laughs> i'm not gonna show up at my boy's house today i mean like what's up fam and dap him up and everything like that we hmm. pour a drink or whatever and we just start talking about his girl that's not what guys do guys guys don't do <laughs> well, this, I'm not a this man. i don't have a man yes brain. this is not just so everyone knows <laughs> Just so you women know, You're this like, is yeah, not what, what do do? we do. When the when the boys get together, we're playing sports, we're working on cars, we're playing video games, we're making fun of each other. We are not sitting here talking about our relationships. There are times, <laughs> there are times where again, my friends will come to me because I am looked up upon in my friend group at least, as far as being, you know, someone who's a dad and someone who's a husband and someone I might not be perfect. I might not make all the right decisions, but I make more good ones than bad ones. And our results show like we have well-mannered kids. We have a house. We have our lives going in the right direction. Yes. And so a lot of that has to do with the fact that when, you know, things weren't always perfect, I didn't listen to the outside uh influences influence. telling me I should do this or suggesting I should do that or I should run for the hills or I should do this you know I'm not yeah. doing I I listen to myself I listen to I mean I heard all of those things but I listen to myself the only person whose advice for real that I ever actually took into consideration in relationships whatsoever was my mama okay because I was gonna um it's my mama. Your grandma, but. my mama, my mama, my mama, my grandma didn't really didn't, have a relationship advice for me. Like by the time me and you were married, she wasn't really all the way still there mentally. So it wasn't like, yeah, it wasn't. She didn't really have advice for me in our relationship. No. Well, I will say I know she, she had advice she, for you. She, yeah, she had advice for me because I'm because she was definitely in her right mind and all well, that. Well, like so I said, I was thinking, so she like, never was really that, was that advice shared with you. No, okay, no, because y'all women talk about what y'all talk about and and y'all leave us out the mix. And so again, women, when you, when the guys be like, okay, they going on a guy time, they're gonna go have guy time. We are not sitting here running it. We are we are not have we are not at a bonfire talking about relationships and drinking tea and uh, crying together. That's not what we're doing. I know that's that. not what we're doing. But then the flip side of that is because women all also think oh they're just gonna go cheat that's what they're gonna do Ew, like face. like like right in the face like ah that's what they're doing oh my God. And the, the fire starts coming out of their eyes and the smoke out of their ears <laughs> no we have to track them put a gps on them now I, I, they're cheating I, I, and it's like no my nigga who does that and i'm thinking mm, and i'd be like i'd be like no my i'd be like no me and my niggas you're on your husband's phone i'd be like i'd be like yo no me and my niggas when we link all we're doing is drinking and acting <laughs> silly like we're trying to find something silly to get into like play miniature golf like that's what me and my friends do we find silly shit to get into like for real and now that we're all older with kids right like that just don't even happen now it just be like okay whose house are we gonna go sit at and watch football and get drunk because yeah, we don't even want to go out anymore no who wants to go out everyone it's, has different no schedules yeah. different no yeah, but but yeah so like in. yeah my mama was the only one who gave me actual real advice that mattered and what she told me was that when things get hard that's when you try harder that was the only was thing really that advice. was the only thing that she gave me that simple, was solid. actual advice but it was simple 
to the point is like, and it's a life lesson, not just a relationship right. lesson, but it is a, she told me this in the context of a conversation about us. Okay. And that was, you know, when things get hard, you try harder. If you are not trying harder, then it wasn't for you. Okay. You know what I mean? And that's one of the things that I've thought about. And I've seen people say that, and I've read it before also. It's like, if y'all are fighting, then you still have a relationship. If y'all ain't fighting, then it ain't worth it. Fighting is... Not okay, fighting, okay. but you no, get what I'm saying. Yeah, right? I mean, I get what you're saying. If there's but, emotion but still. Just to clarify, in. we don't mean physical. No, I ain't talking, talking about, about getting the gloves. I ain't talking about getting the gloves. No, nah, 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 I ain't talking about getting the gloves. I'm talking about if y'all are arguing yes, and there's emotion involved and you're passionate, emotions. then it, there actually is still something there. When it gets to the, I got a, I got a friend right now who's in a relationship and they, all they do is fight. I know they love each other because all they do is I fight. Don't know That's they love all each other. they know. I know they love each other. They're perfect for each other. Because oh, they're God. literally the same person. All they, I want, I'm about to buy them a set of boxing gloves and some headgear for Christmas. Because I know Christmas. you're talking about. Yeah, I'm getting y'all. I'm getting, just so y'all it. know, y'all getting couples, his and hers, matching no. boxing gloves and headgear and mouthpieces, <laughs> uh, courtesy of Everlast for y'all. Oh. <laughs> like I'm acting like we really sponsored, courtesy of Everlast. <laughs> y'all are getting some boxing gear you for Christmas because <laughs> because I'm tired of I'm tired of hearing it and now I want to see it. That's where I'm at with it. Ding, ding, motherfucker. I don't want to see the fight. Like, if y'all are going to keep arguing all the time, I want to see the fight. I want, I want to see it. Then y'all can finally stop and love on each other like we all know that you, y'all want to do. I guess they do. We all, like, I know, I know, I don't know, but I'd be like, young, like. And see, this, and you know what that is? You know what this whole, we laughing about it, you know what it is? Us being in somebody else's goddamn relationship. I don't. <laughs> I isn't that isn't that ironic that us just sitting there talking about it like oh yeah I have an example of somebody who does this and that's me being in somebody else's but relationship. I'm bringing it back to me because I oh. have I have never given this woman <laughs> th- no, Rewind. advice. Bring it back. Right. Let me phrase that. Let me go back and clarify. She's asked me about parenting advice. True story. So like that's different I think than actually like your partner husband. Your boo. So, like, I have I have answered her questions, but I have made a very, very um, clear choice not to purposely give input on her and him or anything dealing with that because I want to stay far away from that. And that's what. <laughs> and to be fair, that's what being a good friend is about. Is like it's not our place to be in their love life. If they solicit, if they solicit help from us then by all means, I will offer my help. Right. However, it is not my place to call up one of my peoples and be like, young, what's up with that chick, dog? Like, that's not what men do, first of all, but that's not, well, take that that's back. That's what take women that back. do sometimes. That's what women do sometimes. Some women. And me saying that's not what men do is not all the way true because there's a lot of dudes out here, you know, with a little... You right. Know, okay. Although, yeah, yeah, like yeah, that. Like that's okay. what they like. They like the tea. They like the gossip. There's men out here that's more into that gossip than than you are. You, they want to know your friends' gossip information <laughs> just because it's interesting. And so, if you do get one of those men, just be careful with that because yes, he might be interested in what's going on with your life, but that's a lot of drama, right? Yeah, that's a lot of like drama. drama. Y'all don't like, we don't like drama. But anyway, yes. So yeah, like if someone solicits your help. Or if you're soliciting help outside of your relationship, fine. That's fine. But just again, remember that, you know, this advice or help or what have you it comes from their perspective, not from your perspective. So you it can't make or break your yeah, relationship it because it's got to, you've got to interpret what they're saying and make it work for your situation. Now, yeah. the other thing is when people go out of their way to tell you what's wrong with your relationship or tell you what you're doing wrong, I'm they like, can kick yourself. rocks. <laughs> they can kick rocks. Now, those are the ones when me and Carol first started talking about this topic. Because, yes, you know, there are people... That you know when you ask for help and they be all in your relationship and stuff, but then there are other people who you just might know, and they decide to say something about your relationship. It's like, man, keep that shit to yourself, fam. Like, what is you talking about? There's one um, one person I know who went out of their way to interject their opinions into our relationship, and it's just like, fam, why, why? I have no clue who that is. I have no well, idea. Carol, again, like <laughs> this is why you need to not. 
laughing so much when we're doing this. It just flow with me because I'm purposefully not naming names. I knew that. To protect the innocent That's and the guilty. That's name the names. Okay. Carol, I have, Carol be on this, don't tell somebody whole name, no, they, they physical address, they cell phone I, number, their no. home phone number, where I, they went to school at. They'll tell everybody business I'm not by accident. That. I will edit all those things out. <laughs> edit it out. Yeah, but something that actually reminds me of of early on in our marriage, and so we only had two kids, so I forgot, you know, the age range or whatever. But we did we did have a um, a mutual couple friend who the the um woman actually would um, would ask me for advice and, and, and suggestions, and she got um she got married after we had got married, and so. We had well. She had a a good girlfriend who I could see right through her that that this woman was mm-hmm. not the best influence on my then friend. She caught across like a hater, which I didn't think was was cool. And so this um this old friend would would ask us both our advice on the same situation, and so. All three of us were married, but in different stages of actually liking and loving our spouse. And so the the one friend that um that she would ask would give her to me awful advice, and then she would ask me the same thing because we all be all, all be together in in the same you no know, place. And so she would give her opinion. I would answer the same question with a with like a totally different thought of of being more positive and so sometimes you know you may have friends or family or family you know, who may be in you know, may have friends or family who who you think may be looking out for you like you were saying earlier but really are not so so like for for the three of us i really did not care for the other woman because she would continue to give negativity and not even want her to, and not even want the um Mutual friend to try, and so no that and that actually caused a a, a, um, a a rift between the friend and I because I was explaining to her you know like look, you're asking us both the same question, various times like various kind of questions, and I'm not trying to see the um see you and him you no know, like fall apart. So like if it doesn't work out, then sure I understand. But like don't just quit without even trying. And so this, this, this other woman would be like, you no, know, leave, quit, like torture him, like make his life hell. And so like when you have someone like that in your life who was like spewing negativity, mm. and then someone like me, you know, who was about positivity. Now I can be shady at times, but I do mean well for anyone because i definitely want everyone to win but i'm not gonna be like look stay with him you know for like forever if things are not gonna work out and and you've tried then yes it's time to move on so like that kind of stuff to me it's it's kind of bothersome like when someone is is clearly either bitter you know because of what they're going through Mm -hmm. they they want to um sabotage everybody else yes sabotage you know and project their their the negativity onto someone who onto someone who actually may really value their advice. And so that's the same thing that you were saying earlier is that misery loves company and yes. unfortunately unfortunately Ding. unfortunately there are so many people and I I know that it's men and women that are like this. I know from the man's perspective, the guys who are like that kind of have a different uh it's a different way of of misery loves company when you're a guy. When it's, when you're a guy, it's like it's that oh that toxic shit. Like I'm I'm a toxic. I'm that toxic nigga. So it's just like doing that that city boy shit. Just being toxic in general on purpose just to be an asshole. And whereas um, with females, that misery loves company thing is more instead of like <laughs> I hate everything and everybody. It's just I hate men. Yeah. And I hate anything that to to do with men because a man made me unhappy. Right. And they want to make and they all, want men, all suffer. men and they all want men their female friends to make their other men suffer. Right. Like <laughs> all men must suffer because one man did me wrong. And so that I mean, there's there's examples of other things, of, you know, with that kind of mentality that people have. Like, I mean, you have people. That's why a lot of people are racist to this day. 
is that, oh, that one person mm -hmm. did me wrong. So yes, now yeah. I'm against all these people. Mm -hmm. When in actuality, you've never even had enough interactions with these other people to know what they're really like. Mm -hmm. um, so that's kind of one of those things that, that does happen in relationships a lot is that, you know, watch out for your girlfriends, watch out for your homeboys. Like they might be the type of people that have been hurt. And for whatever reason, they want to see the world burn. They don't want to see you happy. And it's not that they don't want to see you happy. They don't want to see nobody happy right. because <laughs> right. they're not happy. And they want everyone to go down with them. Right. And it's not, I don't even think it's that a mentality of everybody needs to go down with me. It's just like they see the negative in everything. And I was one of those people that kind of did, did see the negative in everything until I went out of my way. To make a decision every day when you wake up, it's like, yo, I'm gonna have a good day. You yeah, choose positivity. You choose, it's a choice. And, you know, those kind of people who are sad in their own way, you gotta let them, you know, work through that. Whatever they're working through, let them work through that. And then eventually they'll come back to the light side, or maybe they won't. Right. Maybe so they'll like, be, I don't know maybe if they'll, they'll ever cross back yeah. over to the good side. Man, maybe <laughs> they'll be on the dark side till the rest of their life. They'll just be evil the rest of their lives. But, you know, those are also the type of people that parenthetically have big time accountability issues because nothing's ever their fault. And that's why they never change. Because instead of looking inside and being like, man, I was an asshole. I treated this person like this. Right. I projected what happened in my prior relationship on this person and ruined what was a good possibility. Instead of taking that personal accountability, they'd be like, nah, he was a fuck boy. Nah, he was broke nigga. Nah, he was a player. He was cheating on me. It's always somebody else's fault. It's never the accountability. And so that goes for guys too. It's like guys always be like, you know, uh, she didn't do this and she didn't do that. And it's just like, bro, like, what are you doing? Like, it's about accountability. And so uh, to kind of bring all of that back to where it all started is um, thinking about what do your friends and or family have to do with your relationship? What accountability or responsibility to your relationship do they actually have? Right. Zero. 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 They have no accountability to what happens in your life. If your relationship gets fucked up and y'all break up and you're crying for the next month, that doesn't affect them. They just have somebody to talk to about it now. You know what I'm saying? That's not necessarily affecting how they live their life. In fact, there are people like we've kind of mentioned before who are waiting for those opportunities so that their life can be enriched because they have someone else to be sad with all the time. And so I just like I, I, I really want people to understand that, yes, you can take advice from your friends, family, co-workers, the TV, social media, <laughs> TV. the radio, <laughs> uh, your favorite artists on the on the mute on the radio, whatever the case may be. You can take advice from these people, but take it with a grain of salt because they're not living your life. That's the only thing. The little nugget, the little pearl of wisdom that I could really give you is like, I'm not saying don't take people advice. I'm not saying don't take help from people and don't listen to people. I'm not even saying don't help other people. I'm saying do yeah, help people. Yeah, I'm just saying take it with a grain of salt. Understand that perspectives are different. And when your friend says burn all of his clothes and and scratch his car and spray paint like, his house and all that shit. Don't do it, girl, no. Like, yeah, don't do don't that do shit. That. That. When your friend's telling you do all that, don't do that because that friend is not trying to look out for you. That friend will get you put in prison. And also, you also want to look at who your actual friendship circle is because because if you do have friends who are like that, you may also want to question your values. Right. And like what's drawing you to those kinds of people. So like I definitely you know have been able to cut out people the last several years who I thought were you know for me or for us. You are very good at discerning people's, I guess, or that kind of thing. Yeah, so I've always been, been a pretty to... good judge of character. That's okay, something. Fine, that's sounds, something that I. That's something. No, we can do. We can do it in no. in in highfalutin, bougie what? scientific terms. Yes, I am good at discerning people's aura. Fine, or judge ding, of ding, character. Ding. Discern people's aura. So, like when I would hear advice or or comments from this kind of people, I didn't always listen to be like, "Oh my God, I must do like what she says." But then when I look back, I'm like, "That's not, that was not." Helpful that advice, and so it's a good thing that I didn't listen to your unasked for advice because if I did, I would not be treating myself. And so, like sometimes women, and I'm going to assume men as well, but I don't know. But mm -hmm. at least for women, like 
you know what you want to do before you even ask someone. So um, so either either you need confirmation or reassurance or maybe like a little bit of clarity. But I would I would think in those cases, you no, know, that someone would would know that what the outcome they want to be is before they even ask someone. So either they want someone to sway them or be like, yeah, girl, that's you know that's that's the right kind of idea. So is that how it is for men too? Like I don't think that that's a men women thing. I think that it's a specific person thing because mm. some people are really steadfast in their values and what mm. they want out of life, and other people are very very easily influenced. Oh, so I so I definitely I I've, I've learned that just in my years of leadership at work um, over the years that I've learned that there are different type of people, and some people are very very easily swayed. They're mm -hmm. just they're malleable even like they can just be formed right. and shaped into anything and they get around the wrong kind of people and then bloop all of a sudden they're trash individuals <laughs> and so like that's what i'm trying to say is like certain people just are like that certain people are going to follow whatever people tell them to do because right. they're just insecure in, the, in of themselves or something along those lines but um yeah like you gotta you gotta really watch out for people you gotta really watch out for folks who um you know will tell you what they think, tell you what you want to hear. That's another thing that, that you, right that's another thing you got to be careful about. Like if you're, uh, if people are always in your ear, gassing you up, telling you what you want to hear, not telling you what you need to hear. Cause I've had conversations with my friends where I told their asses, you got to get this shit together, bro. Like this is embarrassing. You're embarrassing yourself. You're embarrassing us as guys. Right. Like you got to get your shit together. This isn't cool. And I've had guy friends who would ask me, like, young, she did this, she did that, she's doing this, she's doing that. I'm like, bro, what are you doing now? What are you doing? You can only control you. You can't control your partner. If you want to control your partner, you're not wanting a relationship. That's not what you want. If you're trying to control your partner, you don't want a relationship. You want a puppy. Right. I was the same thing. You, <laughs> like, you, want, a, you, you want, want a dog. Pet. You want a pet. You don't want a, you don't want a relationship. You want a child. You want a pet. You want an employee. You don't want a relationship if it's always one sided and doing one thing one way. And so, <clears throat> yeah, like, so this was when, when my friends have asked me, Young, what's up? She's saying this and doing that and saying this and doing that. Sometimes I do let my friends vent, right, get yeah, it off their chest, get it off your chest, vent, but then I'm going I'm to wheel it back and I'm going to tell you, dog, all right, so what are you doing? Because all you can do is control what you can do. Mm -hmm. You can't control what she's going to do. You can control what you're going to do and hope that you're doing the right thing and the right thing will happen because you're doing the right thing. That's all you really can hope for in a relationship. If you're out here trying to control your partner, you don't have a relationship. You never did. I'm sorry to tell you, but that's just the case. Um, so, yeah, just when those situations come up and this also happens to be my uh, my friend who's always beefing. Um, okay. So, like, whenever they're beefing, I just be like, bro. Calm down, get it all out. Right. Let's talk about it because some of the stuff he be saying is valid. Yeah, it's valid. It's, it's super valid that like, yeah, Shorty did this and Shorty did that. And I'm like, bro, yeah, that does not sound great. Like, that's not cool. Like, damn, that's fucked up. I feel bad for you, bro. But then by the same token, at the end of all of that, I always say the same thing. All right, so what are you gonna do? Right. Like, so you know what I'm saying? What are you gonna do? What do you wanna do? Like, what's gonna make you happy, fam? Like, you have to control you. You have to worry about you in the relationship. I know it sounds crazy because when you get into a relationship, you're not supposed to be you. It's supposed to be us. Mm -hmm. But by the same token, you can't control us. You can control you yeah, and your contribution from you is what makes us work. And so that's where that mentality kind of got to come from. Like, you can't. You can't be sitting there just trying to do you, do you, do you, do you all the time. Also, your do you has to incorporate your partner as well. So that's just another thing to kind of think about from that perspective. But um, yeah, just to kind of summarize all this stuff we've been talking about today, um, you know, people will try to interject into your relationship. It may be trying to give you advice. It may be trying to steer you in the right direction. It may be trying to steer you in the wrong direction. It may be someone who, you know, has gone through their relationship and their relationship has done them bad. And so they just figure they got to do everything bad to everybody else just because their relationship went bad. You got uh, friends, family, co-workers, associates, what have you, 
who just aren't capable of understanding that some people can and will be happy if you just let them be so. And so that's why that, you know, they project what they've got going on onto you. And so when those type of situations happen, that's when you've really, really got to be mindful of who is giving you this advice. So uh, just hope that that stuff was really helpful for you. Um, just so that y'all know, we are no marriage or relationship pros or the ultimate experts no, at whatever the, the subject is. We're just I'm not no I'm not no expert <laughs> at none of this. I, I talk shit and swallow spit. I run my mouth. I'm good at it. But maybe we can shed some light on something you've got going on. So if that's the case, maybe you can shed some light on to this topic. Maybe you got some other stuff you might want us to talk about. Send an email to us at the linguistic show at gmail.com because we might have something to say about that next time. Now it's time for our awesome segment. What's it called, baby? What is it called? Wordplay. Oh, yeah, that part. You named it. I did, though. Yeah. Ha! I didn't know what segment we was playing. I should have known because you got the book. <laughs> Go ahead and get it. Okay. I, I should have known because the book's out. The, the dictionary out, so y'all know what time it is. Yeah. 30 seconds for her to give me a... Not, not 45 seconds? 45 seconds? Why does it keep getting bigger and bigger every week? It changes every week. You keep getting more time. That's what it is. Okay, you so try. we need to like set a time. We don't need to set a time. I be spitting it out. 30 I need seconds? 45 seconds? What, okay. How long is the Jeopardy theme? 60 seconds, isn't know. it? That's probably too long. Yeah, it's too long. Y'all okay. don't want to wait for a minute while Carol figures letter? out. <laughs> What's my letter? The letter of today, E. You ain't Russ Barr. <laughs> E E M as in Murray. M. I know. Murray. M. Okay. I cannot give you an easy word. My my eyes are closed. Mm. It's like a magic ball. I'm just wondering. Dude, why are you looking at it? What do you mean? Why am I looking at it? I'm not the one that needs to hide. You had your eyes closed to pick the random word. I'm looking at what you pointed at, so you don't change. I'm not gonna change. Okay, your word is matchlock, so you need to matchlock. Yes, that is not the word you yes, pointed at. Yes, it is. So you, that's where I was on equipped. So anyhow, you need so, to define it and use it in a sentence. I'll give you 45 seconds. Matchlock. If I'm not mistaken, a matchlock has something to do with old style guns. It's like the firing mechanism or something, you right? Just saw it the no, car. no, <laughs> real talk. Like matchlock, it's because it's because the old style guns had like the the gunpowder you had to mm. pour in, and then the bullet you put in, and you stuff it all in there. Right, okay. And like the matchlock is like the isn't the matchlock like the little uh. The thing that 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 sparks, it's like the I guess, like, it's, probably. it's the flammable thing that when you when you oh, pull the trigger that it, it's the flammable thing that sets everything off. Okay. If I'm not mistaken, is that right? What's a matchlock? A matchlock is a musket equipped with a matchlock or a slow burning match lowered over a hole in the breech of a musket to oh, ignite the charge. So if any of y'all ever seen Pirates of the Caribbean, that's that You're thing that the dude is. had with a stick that had fire on it and then he put it down in the hole on the cannon. That's a matchlock. Wow. Yeah, you would definitely know. I was kind of close. Really I was kind of close. All right, bet. So use it in a sentence. Yes. <laughs> So I told my friend I wanted to watch Matchlock and not Matlock, okay. and he thought I was crazy. <laughs> okay, that's a good Matchlock one. instead of Matlock. Ding, ding, ding. No, like I don't. I, like, yeah, I already use it in a sentence. Like the yeah. Pirates of the Caribbean, like the dudes with the with the cannons, and they got the little stick. They got the fire on the end of the stick, and they put that down in the hole on the cannon instead of lighting a fuse like Tom and Jerry used to do, or Yosemite <laughs> Sam used to do back in the day. That rascally wabbit, and he used to. Light the fuse, and then the cannon would always blow him up, man. These these cartoon characters was down bad, man. I swear they was. Anyway. My word will, I mean, not my word, my letter will be B. Because. But I, I can do that one. But not B. No, you can't. <laughs> I can't do that. You're just looking for words. You got your. You're just looking for no, some. I'm, okay, ready? <laughs> just. <laughs> <laughs> That's easy enough. I hope so. What's the word? This is terrible. This whole column. What's the word? Is this, is this whole column in this page one hundred and thirty-three of the, of the, of the Merriam-Webster's <laughs> Collegiate Dictionary? The whole second column is all derivatives of the word blood. 
So what's the word then? Blood. Like I t- Ow, blood. I literally Ow. I'm like blood. 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 Okay. Blood. Okay. Blood. Okay. Blood, okay. Back, blood brother. Okay. It's blood. Okay, the blood word is your word. Just blood. Blood. Okay, blood. So what? My definition so what? is what? some gang shit. I'm sorry. Anyway, go oh, ahead. Oh my gosh. Okay. My definition would be the liquid in your body that's red that keeps your body flowing and that goes through your heart. It's not red till it touches oxygen. Oh gosh, it's fine. Blue inside You're you. right. Okay, good. Okay, well that's the one. Well, good finish. job. So let's hear. That's... Let's hear your your blood sentence. Blood. Okay. Get it back in blood. Burr, burr, big burr. Thank you for Get telling it me. Back in blood. Thank you for for, burr, for reminding burr, me. Burr, Stop. Burr, <laughs> burr, I'm sorry. Thank you for reminding me that blood is not red in your body. Right, because I'm light skinned, so you can see yeah, it. Yeah, I see. Yes, you're red. Yes, sir. <laughs> so, thank you again for joining and laughing and maybe getting something out of this episode of the Linguistic Show. You can get on out of here. Jason you ain't got to go home. Email, <laughs> but you, can... <laughs> you ain't got to go home, but you can get out of here. But you can find us on mm-hmm. Anchor, yep. Spotify, Stitcher. If you got any topics, of course, send us a DM or send us an email. But you better not send me no relationship advice. No, don't do that. Like, no, I'm just playing. <laughs> you can send me relationship advice. I'm just not going to listen unless it's good advice. Okay, bye, everybody. Bye. If you enjoyed this, like, comment, subscribe, and share to the Linguistic, Linguistic Show. This has been an Ashangali Enterprises production. Co-produced by Naomi. Music by Brassville. <laughs>